what are the significance level and the p value in statistics in this video we will try to understand that let's say we want to know the average expense of a family in india now it is not possible to measure the expense of each family in a country so instead we can draw a random sample of say 100 families from the entire population we can then find out the mean expense of this 100 samples in that way we can take say 100000 samples of sample size 100 from the entire population thus we can get 100000 sample means we can then plot the histogram of the sample means and get a sampling distribution of the sample means as we discussed in one of our previous videos the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means will be the population mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means will be sigma by root n where sigma is the standard deviation of the population and n is the sample size the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is also called the standard error now let's look back at our example let's say that when we draw a random sample of 100 families from the entire population we get the mean expense to be rupees 11000 and let's also assume that from our previous calculation that was done 5 years back the average expense of a family in india was rupees 10000 so there is a difference between the average expense of the random sample and the average expense of the population but this difference may also be because of sampling error as we discussed in one of our previous videos the sampling error is the difference between the sample statistic and the population parameter so how should we know whether the average expense of a family in india has changed in the last 5 years to know that we need hypothesis testing so we can state two hypotheses the null hypothesis will be that the average expense of a family in india has not changed and is rupees 10000 and the alternative hypothesis is that the average expense of a family in india is not rupees 10000 so we need to know at this point whether the strength of the evidence that is present in the sample is strong enough to reject the null hypothesis to know that we need to find out whether the effect is statistically significant the effect is the difference between the sample value and the null value in other words in our case the effect present in our sample is the difference between our sample mean and the mean value as per the null hypothesis which is rupees 10000 in our case and to know whether the effect present in a sample is statistically significant to reject the null hypothesis we need to determine the significance level the significance level or alpha is the probability that we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true so if the significance level is 5% that will mean there is a 5% risk that we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true in other words in our example there is a 5% risk that we conclude the average expense of a family in india has changed when it is not changed at this point we can draw the sampling distribution of the sample means assuming the null hypothesis so the sampling distribution will have a mean of rupees 10000 in our case and this sampling distribution will be a normal distribution now the sample mean of our sample is rupees 11000 so the effect of our sample is rupees 11000 minus rupees 10000 that is rupees 1000 and let's assume we decide the significance level to be 5% so in this graph we can see the sampling distribution of the sample means we can see that the sample mean is rupees 10000 now from the graph 
we can see that the sample mean of rupees 11000 is different from the null hypothesis but is the difference significant enough to reject the null hypothesis here the significance level is 5% so we will shade 5% area under the curve that is farthest from the null value as the curve is symmetric and this is a two tailed test we will get two regions that are farthest from the null value as shown in the graph each region has an area of 0.025% of the distribution. In other words, each region has a probability of 0.025 and these two probabilities will add up to 0.05, which is our significance level. As we know, the effect in our sample is rupees 1000. So, we can shade two regions under the curve that are at least as far away as 1000 from the null hypothesis. We get to see the shaded region in this graph. Please note the difference between this graph and the earlier graph. The total probability of these two shaded regions is let's say 0.046, that is the p-value. In other words, the p-value is the probability that we will obtain an effect that is more than or equal to the effect present in the sample when the null hypothesis is true. At this point, we will compare the p-value with the significance level. If the p-value is less than the significance level, we will reject the null hypothesis. In our case, the p-value is 0.046 and the significance level is 0.05. So, the null hypothesis should be rejected. Hence, we will reject the null hypothesis and we can conclude that the average expense of an Indian family has changed and it is not rupees 10,000. I hope this helps. Interested viewers who want to know more, please visit the website of the security body or refer to the playlist Statistics for Machine Learning. The relevant links are provided in the description. You can also subscribe to us and get notifications on recent videos.